juice. Kid Cosmic is a 2D animated series by Netflix. Created by Craig McCracken, who has created other shows such as the original Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and Wander Over Yonder. I'm a big fan of those shows, so when Kid Cosmic was announced, I was pretty excited. The series was animated by Mercury Filmworks, who actually did the animation for Wonder Over Yonder, and many other shows. The style of the show was heavily inspired by old time comics like Dennis the Menace and Adventures of Tintin, and I can definitely say it brings it all to life very well. I'm going to go over the series as a whole and break it down from season to season, focusing on the plot and certain episodes. <laughs> season 1 introduces us to Kid, a young boy who dreams of being a real superhero. With comics being his life, he hopes to one day be a hero himself. Unfortunately, there's not much opportunity to be a hero where he lives. in a very low populated southwestern United States desert. Until one day, a spaceship crashes in the area. Red Kid discovers five cosmic stones of power. With these stones, he finally has the chance to fulfill his dreams of being a real hero. He ends up using the green cosmic stone for his main power. The green stone allows him to levitate and fly as well as control objects around him. What? It's working! It's Now of course there are 5 stones, therefore there are others involved. When Kid gets the stones, he involves Joe, a kind and caring teen who works as a waitress at her mom's diner. She tends to be reserved to people she doesn't know, but in time she learns to trust others and as well as her future team. Give it back! That's probably really really dangerous in the wrong hands! Which is why we should test them out together. You need help in case of a class 10 introversal explodimagorium scenario. <laughs> Joe takes the purple stone and gains the power of portal creation, allowing her to make a portal any place she sees. Oh, that's so creepy but so cool! However, she needs a clear picture of the place to know where the portal should open. Following Joe, we have Rosa, a young child who's energetic and is always ready for playtime. She looks up to Kid as a sort of big brother figure, cause there's not too many kids around her age. She's never afraid to show who's boss in a fight and is always willing to protect her friends. Me. Ugh. Bad lobster boy! Oh, 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 oh. Rosa takes the blue stone, which gives her the ability to grow up to 40 feet tall. Of course, with that she becomes super strong and being able to take down big things in her path that she couldn't before. Next up we got Papa G, Kid's grandfather who's been taking care of Kid since he was young. Papa G is an eccentric, kind person with a heart of gold, and is always willing to help others, especially Kid. <laughs> Thanks, Papa G. I'm off to save the day. Go get him, Kid. Papa G uses the yellow stone, which allows him to make copies of himself and allow them to act independently from each other. Not sure we got the core strength to pull this off, Kid. And last but not least, we have Tuna Sandwich, a cat that's loyal to Kid and won't hesitate to save him either. He is a cat and many of his thoughts become words as he uses the red power stone which grants him the power of precognition, as well as retrocognition. This lets him see into the future and the past. He also ends up getting a high tech collar later on which allows him to speak. Together they form the group of heroes protecting the small town in the middle of nowhere, stopping alien invaders throughout the first half of the season. I was thinking the local heroes? That's actually pretty cool. I love it! Yay team! Lame. Next we have the antagonist of the first season, Stuck Chuck. He comes to Earth in search of the stones of power, but in the process gets stuck in Kid's RV. And for a few episodes, he tries to manipulate Kid as he goes about his day. I never doubted you. I still do. You fools just got lucky. Wait till my great leader gets here. Oh, then you'll- And by episode 6, he succeeds. But that's only because Kid doesn't feel as though he's pulling his weight. And his team around him continues to succeed. Great! Everybody got a medal. Not everyone. With Chuck manipulating him with the fact that Kid wants to prove himself to the team, the team ends up setting up a fake conflict with the villain to make Kid think that he's gotten his first big win to boost his confidence. But Kid soon finds out that it was all a ruse and gets frustrated. 
I'm sure you feel hurt, betrayed, pathetic, incompetent, and so on. But the worst part must be finally realizing that you'll never be a hero. Chuck, being who he is, brings Kid to a new low, and Kid steals the team's stones to try to prove that he can solve the conflict on his own. Meanwhile, Chuck has been secretly building a communicator to call his great leader to Earth to get the stones. Do it! Call him down right now! I'll take him and his whole army on myself! Him, me, desert, now! Kid then tries to stop Chuck's great leader on his own with all the stones of power, but he realizes he's in over his head. Much to his efforts, it turns out that having all the stones of power at once was too much power for him. And Chuck's great leader takes the stone from him and the rest of the local heroes give the chase to get the stones back. The great leader uses the stones against them and Kid becomes too tired to fight. And Chuck reunites with his great leader. But the great leader doesn't seem to really care in the slightest. Me, Chuck! I'm, I mean, I'm the one who called you! I found the stones and I- In the meantime, some alien dogs come to attack the great leader to take the stones for themselves. The great leader panics and throws the stones away and the dogs chase after it. Chuck chases after his leader to finally leave Earth, but is dismissed. I don't want to be stuck, Chuck, anymore! Kid tries to retrieve the rings from the dogs to no avail. As the team tries to console Kid, they are interrupted by some helicopters, and it turns out that the government has been watching them for a while, and are looking to take the stones for themselves to create their own superhero team. And now they've taken over the area and are keeping a careful eye on the team and locals. So you're saying all these people are some secret government agency? Yes, yes. They've been watching the kid since he found those cosmic rings. Tuna is put in a cage for attacking a guard and thrown in a garage with Chuck who is being questioned about an alien invasion. Chuck explains that the only invasion he knew was from his leader but it failed. But the government leader insists there's another invasion coming and that he's preparing for it. I'm sorry, real invasion? <sighs> Long range scanners indicate there's a large interplanetary armada headed toward our solar system. We believe they're after the stones. Meanwhile, another alien in the garage named Carlax starts an argument with Chuck for making him crash on Earth when he possessed the stones. Tuna breaks free from his cage and helps Chuck. He starts meowing but Chuck doesn't understand so he gives him his translator and is finally able to understand him. <gasps> Wait, is that, is that me? Hot damn! I've been dreaming that something like this would happen! They decided to work together to save Kid and take back the stones. They seek help from the rest of the team and all of them head over to help Kid. In the process, they find out that they've been under watch since the very beginning when they first got the stones, and they were being used as test subjects without even noticing. Before getting Kid back, Tuna talks about a precondition he saw about Kid running into the middle of the battlefield, and they need to make sure it doesn't happen or else it's over for Kid. Didn't want to believe it myself, but I seen the proof. But they can't save Kid alone, they need the stones, so they devise a plan to get them back, but unfortunately the government has already started using them for their team, the Earth Force. Their mission is to stop all alien invasions including the upcoming invasion. Meanwhile, Kid is in the middle of the desert burning his comics and his optimism and belief in superheroes has completely vanished. Guess it's time to watch the real heroes win. While reading one of his comics, Kid comes to the conclusion that the aliens are actually the good guys and they want the stones to protect themselves and their people. So Kid decides to try to intervene in the fight and tries to show that there's no bad guys on either side. The team is stumped on what to do because they can't get the stones and they don't know how to save Kid either, so they improvise and go in after him. Once Kid is safe, he tells the team that he's sorry for what he did and that the aliens weren't the bad guys after all. They just want to be protected, and they devise a new plan to get the stones and stop the fighting once and for all. Those evil alien bad guys are actually nice alien good guys. And I was thinking, powers or no powers, how about we try to help them and save the day? They put on a super suit that Papa G was working on in secret and heads off to battle. The Air Force captures the aliens but just in time the local heroes swoop in and save them. The government leader stops them from further disrupting their plans and explains that it's Earth's turn to be on top and no aliens will win. Earth's been disrespected, laughed at, treated like the whips of the Milky Way, well <laughs> no more! Even after Kid explains what the aliens were really doing on Earth, after being detained they will fight their way out and are able to retrieve the green stone. Kid and the rest of the team escape with the Earth Force giving chase. Kid distracts the Earth Force and the rest are rescuing the aliens. The fight becomes very hectic with Kid saving everyone and discovering that the green stone is not flight 
but telekinesis, so we can manipulate things to move, hence how we can fly. Whoa! Kid gives a speech of what a hero really is, and most people are touched by it. Kid uses his newfound powers to finally get back the stones from the Earth Force, gives the stones to the aliens, and they leave happily. The aliens tell them that the stones are actually the last things left from each of their worlds, because their planets were destroyed by Rhodius, the planet killer. So the stone is all that's left of your planets? Each one ripped apart by Rhodius. Rhodius, the planet killer! <laughs> They all become friends and the aliens leave Earth, at least until one of them returns. She proclaims that Erodius the planet killer has returned and that there are now 13 stones and she needs their help. They agree to the mission to find the rest of the stones and stop Erodius once and for all. The alien named Queen Zhan teleports the heroes and the diner to space and that's where season 1 ends. Overall, for a first season, I'd say it was really great and the way it sets up everything for season 2 is really well done. The character progression for everyone is really wonderful, especially for Kid, but even so, I feel like everyone gets the right amount of screen time to get to know them, and it was still a really good story for Kid. At least for this season, because next season we shift heavy focus onto another member of the team. Season 2 starts off right where things left off in Season 1. Our heroes are in space and they seem to be adapting pretty well to it. Business is really booming with new customers and a mission to seek the stones. On one of Kid's deliveries, he runs into Phantos the Amasser, who is an evil fanboy of Erodius the Planet Killer, and he wants all 13 stones to help Erodius destroy the galaxy. I'm really more of like a huge Erodius, I hate to say fan, more of a curator of the various curios, mementos, and ephemera associated with the Planet Killer. He forces Kid to call the rest of the team for help. Once they arrive to help Kid, they find out that Phantos has already some of the stones and a battle ensues for control over all of them. It ends up being a back and forth struggle over the stones, but in the end they all end up retrieving their powers back except for Kid who gets a new stone that transforms himself into goo. They also retrieve another stone that allows its user to have multiple arms which they use to their advantage. From here on out this season we tend to focus more on Jo and seeing how she handles being a leader to the team. She feels pretty overwhelmed at times, so she seeks help from Queen Jean. Queen Jean first offers Joe words of encouragement, but also proceeds to sort of give shady advice on being a good leader, such as giving orders instead of taking them, not letting anyone stand in her way, and as well as doing whatever it costs to make sure the mission succeeds. And this rule is the most important of all. When it comes to the greater good, do whatever it takes, no matter the cost. And from there on, each episode this season involves Joe in some way, trying to make the best decisions possible, whether she or the team like it or not. Of course, this ultimately ends up biting her in the butt because she's being manipulated without even knowing it. They also continue the season by trying to collect all the other stones before Phantos gets to them first, which leads to many more of the minor characters of the diner helping out and retrieving more of the stones. Joe's mother joins the team on a few missions, trying to show Joe that she can be a great leader and offer more encouragement and helpful advice. And who saved the not evil aliens from that nasty biker in black? And who defeated Phantos and gained the multi arm stone? But Joe ends up steering her away and wanting to be more independent and only really taking advice from Queen Jean. Even after succeeding in a mission, Joe still feels like she can do better, and she does end up doing better to the point of being too cocky about it and it all ends up jeopardizing the mission in the end. She ends up getting chewed out by Queen Jean, which results in only bringing herself down even lower than before, and pushing her even more away from her mom who's only trying to help. It eventually becomes so bad that Joe ends up replacing the whole team for just her and Crosh the warrior. They met in a battle arena after Joe ended up defeating her and recruited her to help the team with some exercises. I've been thinking, and I have the perfect plan to defeat Erodius. What if Crosh is the team? This was also after the battle arena when they gained control of all the stones from Phantos. And when they were all at the diner after taking all the stones from him, she makes the decision then and there. Of course, the real team doesn't like this decision at all, which ends up really hurting her relationship with them and especially Kid. How could you? Because I'm the leader and this was the best- You're a jerk! Hey, calm down! I How could you do this? And Joe and Crush end up going to Erodius alone to challenge him with Joe only following the advice of Queen Jean who argues against Joe's mom about the best decisions that should be made for the good of the team. You! This 
this all your fault? This is no time for anger, Flo. With all the cutthroat nonsense you put in her head, I swear, if she doesn't come back... Of course, her assault on Herodias doesn't go well for her, and ultimately Crush ends up betraying her to get revenge on Joe for defeating her in the battle arena, which allows Phantos to take all the stones, and from there, it seems like it's all hopeless. Joe gets transported to a desert planet and Phantos teleports himself and Herodias to the diner to destroy everything Joe was trying to protect. Joe ends up getting help from Carlax from the previous season who was captured by the government and they head out towards the diner together to save everyone despite all odds against them. But Joe doesn't give up and bands together with a fleet of allied forces comprised of the people they've helped in the past to take a stand against Phantos and Herodias. All of you are welcome at my mom's diner and none of you deserve to be swallowed up by Herodias. My mom would be the first to fight for any one of you, and that's why I'm ready to fight for her. At first, it seems like it's working, and they start winning, but Fanto starts fighting back. The team ends up retrieving the stones back, and it becomes a back and forth battle, and then it becomes a full frontal assault on Herodias. During the battle, they discover that Herodias is covered with stones, and they use all the power to their advantage with everyone's powers going on all at once. But before they can destroy Herodias for good, Phantos comes back and thinks he can turn the tides in his favor by sending the team back to Earth to be crushed by Herodias. But the team discovers more stones to help them out and form a strategic plan to stop Phantos and Herodias. Let's do our best and work with what we got. The day has been won and the team is back home on Earth where they are confronted by a task force called the PPG, aka Planet Protection Group. They say they want the team of local heroes to be the team global heroes. They need their power to help those in need, and they also accidentally let loose stones around the planet after defeating Herodias, so they need to clean it up and make sure they don't fall into the wrong hands. And that's where season 2 ends, and we head into the third and last season of this great show. Welcome to the team, Kid Cosmic and the Global Heroes. This season I would say was great overall, and a huge improvement in many ways such as giving characters like Joe big development, with her trying to be the best leader that she can be, but learning the hard way of what it takes to lead a team. And with Kid being patient on things, whether it's trying to save the galaxy or retrieving the stones of power. We also get good development for the minor characters like the extras at the diner. And with Queen John ending up learning that a good leader is not one that just makes orders, but but a good leader listens to their team and helps guide them. The leader may make the call, but they can also take the time to treat teammates fairly and listen to different opinions and perspectives. Queen John just thought just because she lost her team that she needed to be tougher and get the results, when that wasn't the case at all. And this reflected onto Joe, but does come through in the end, and this is reflected onto Joe. But she does come through in the end to help the team finish the job. Another minor character that gets good development this season is Joe's mom, Flo, who acts as a brighter perspective but faces many obstacles along the way. We did get to see the other members of the team help in their own way. The only character this season I think really got shafted was Chuck, who was mainly turned to dish duty and not much else. You'd think after the first season he'd have a more minor role, but I didn't expect it to be this minor. What about me? You can finish the dishes. I'll Okay. They could have really showed how he changed and how we could have helped the team, but sadly no. Overall though, it was a really great second season and it turns it up to an 11 in terms of action and excitement. Now let's see how the last season fares. <laughs> season 3 starts off once again where we left off at the end of the previous season. The team has been chosen to be the global heroes, with new gear and a new mission of stopping those who will use the stones of power for evil. The global heroes save the world daily, living out the dream kids always wanted. But after a few missions, Baba G seems to think that they are succeeding a bit too easily. That worked perfectly! Strange, we never get this far without some sort of- Ah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 There it is. This ends the first episode with the biker in black, the leader of the government from the first season, returning and building a giant robot to take revenge on the global heroes. After a few more missions on fighting evildoers, Joe starts to think that something weird is going on as well, and goes to investigate. I mean, all this stuff is nuts. Robots, movies, Travis. Not to mention exactly how did I know how to beat that goo monster. Meanwhile, the biker in black returns with his giant robot to take down the global heroes. And they find out that there is a 14th stone that he will use to destroy all the stones. And once I get the stone, I'll use its power to wipe out all the stones. No more powers, no more alien invasions, no more playing hero. 
During the battle, Joe leaves to investigate her suspicions on what is going on, and she quickly finds out that none of what they've been doing is real and all a part of Kid's fantasy. Papa G confronts Joe and tells her that he already knows but wants to keep it all a secret for Kid's sake and wants to see if all of Kid's comic stories come true, with one of them showing that the main hero finally meets his parents after thinking they were dead. Papa G, I don't think we are home. We're in some childhood fantasy come true. I don't think any of this is real. It's not, but it's everything the kid ever wanted. Papa G wants to see it through to make Kid happy, and now Joe understands the secret of the place they are in. She knows they can't lose and just presses a button to defeat the biker in black and saves the day once again. By the end of the episode, Joe confronts Papa G about telling Kid the truth before it's too late, and in the meanwhile, Joe will be trying to find a way to get out of this fantasy realm. Papa G tries to muster up the courage to tell Kid the truth, but just can't bring himself to do it, and Kid ends up coming up with theories on where the 14th stone is. This leads towards the PPG having it themselves. In the meantime, Joe tells the rest of the team the truth about the world they are in, figuring out that Phantos actually sent the team to a fantasy world where all their dreams come true, a world where they defeated him, but sadly, they did not. This was hinted a little in a few episodes, with Tuna's foresight power not being useful because they were never really in danger in this world. Must be why my visions never worked. We were never in any real danger. Yes! None of the dangers we face here are real. They decide that reading Kid's comic can somehow give them the answer to get them back to their reality. In the meantime, Kid's theories keep coming true, and Papa G is still struggling to tell him the truth. But he eventually does. Kid does end up actually seeing his parents before it all comes out, and of course it becomes hard for him to come to terms with it all. In the end, he knows it's not real, even his parents, and he knows he needs to snap out of it and stop Erodius for good. No matter how much I want any of this to be true, it's not. I can't waste my time with these fantasies if the real Erodius is still out there threatening the real galaxy. With Kid being in control of the world, he simply asks to leave and they all get out. But they end up being in the last place they were before they were teleported, and that's outer space. Outer space! They are recovered by Queen Jean and are taken to a last safe haven where they try to come up with a final effort to take down Phantos and Erodius once and for all. But it seems most people are starting to give up on defeating Erodius, with Kid and Joe being the only ones still determined as ever to make a plan. Rosa also tries, but her parents don't want her in any more danger than she's already been in. Rosa goes on her own journey to think of a plan to help everyone get out of their funk, and with the help of some small alien refugees, they end up motivating the others. She went with the aliens to recover the stones they need from Erodius and formed the team once again to give themselves a brighter tomorrow with a little spark. See? Just takes a little spark. Erodius is on his way to destroy Earth once and for all, with Phantos controlling the planet killer getting there. The team pulls a last ditch effort to stop Phantos and Erodius, pulling out all the stops. But in the middle of the battle, a large pile of rocks ends up rolling onto Papa G, and Kid tries to get him out of the rubble. This is where we get treated to a flashback when Kid starts living with Papa G after his parents passed away. At first, not really liking Papa G all that much and wanting to run away, but he eventually warms up to him. It gets very emotional for Kid knowing Papa G is all the family he's got left. Surprisingly though, we see Papa G being okay as he emerges from the rubble, not knowing how he got out unscathed, and he thinks it all from his lucky stone necklace. But before they can be happy for too long, they are captured by Phantos again and are used to act as trophies in his new armor, and it seems that this time it really is all over for them. But then something happens. Erodius stops attacking Earth and starts attacking Phantos. The heroes are able to escape and watch Phantos get swallowed by Erodius. Kid ends up retrieving the stones and they all use their powers to stop Erodius. Tuna uses his power to tap into everyone's mind to show Erodius before being the planet killer, showing it was once a planet that healed many until it was destroyed with one shard being lost in the universe. Erodius was once a living planet. It healed beings from all over. Erodius tried to heal itself over time with the help of other planets searching for its long lost shard that would bring it peace. Its spirit roamed the galaxy trying to heal itself with the power of other planets searching for the missing piece. Unsure of what to do, Papa G ends up figuring out that he has the 14th stone and confessing that all of his luck that he has had has been thanks to this stone. He also admits that he's over 112 years old and he's also prepared to give it up, even if it means giving up his life in the process. But if that stone's kept you alive all this time, what happens if you give it up? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. Kid, of course, is extremely upset and doesn't want to lose the one and only family he has left. 
Papa G lets out one last speech and throws the 14 stone into Erodius. Erodius is restored, but at the cost of the team's powers fading and possibly not being able to save Papa G in time. We fade to white and we return to Earth, with everyone saying goodbye to the now powerless rings. We also see that Papa G did make it in the end, but at the price of now being in a wheelchair because he no longer has the powers of the stone to keep him fit. Another government facility comes to the locals again, but this time it's to congratulate them and reward them with a huge check of money to tell them that to keep these events a secret and that the truth about it will be denied. Six months pass and the new Oasis Diner is open, but Kid is struggling to keep all they have done to a secret. Despite his many efforts, no one believes him and all he wants to do is show the world that there's more out there and wants to show everyone that despite the differences, they all want the same thing in life. In the end, everyone at the diner takes Kid's words to heart and devises a plan to show all the things that they've done over the course of the series by inviting the customers they've had in space. They decide that they are not going to stop letting people know that there is more out there, and they broadcast it all over the galaxy, which of course gets the traction they wanted seeing all the friends once again. This all ends off on a brighter day than the one before. I found this to be a really great conclusion and really good with great character development for Rosa, Kid, and especially Papa G this season. Showing what it takes to be a hero and working as a team, giving us the bright and engaging story for all to watch. The animation was very consistent the whole way through, and the stakes of each season were brought up each time giving a new engaging character to hate and care for. I do maintain that this season was just as great as the others, although it did only have 6 episodes compared to the previous seasons of 10 and 8. But I think they used the time that they had very well and gave the fans of the show a very satisfying conclusion. It gave us many life lessons along the way and show us different perspectives on how to be a hero. It may be a short series only lasting 3 seasons over the course of a year of airing, but an overall great series from a great creator and one I will be sure to come back to in the future.